guys, he is an amazing actor. He's a big time movie star. He's the coolest man on the planet. He's smiling creepily at me. Let's bring him out. The Ant-Man himself, Mr. Paul Rudd. You see it, right? You guys have no idea what's about to happen no. here. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Hey. Wow. I got to tell you guys right off the bat, I have just come from the Westin in Times Square where I had a giant pint of tequila and a bowl of cheese sticks. <laughs> so, this is going to get ugly. <laughs> All to our benefit. Uh, congratulations, my friend. This is a, a great piece of work. It's so exciting to see you in, well, in any movie, but a Marvel movie. You're a superhero. This is a moment that needs to be marked in, a, in an Apple Store event, I suppose. <laughs> it's only fitting. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty surreal, I must say. Yeah. Not the Apple Store-ness of it all. I mean, that <laughs> is surreal as well, but just all of it. Pretty crazy. So have you been... Have you been traveling the world on this one already? Tell me what it's, what is the differences in promoting something like this where you're the guy on a movie of this scale versus other films that you've publicized? Um, well, th there's more with this. It feels uh, different. It feels bigger. More people, are, I think, are interested. Marvel has a, it's a pretty uh, solid fan base. And, uh, and so it you know, feels like a this fast moving train that all of a sudden just, you know, I got on and then like that. But uh, as far as the world traveling aspect of it all, it hasn't been, it's been less than I thought. I was in Los Angeles for a few weeks doing some promotion and then London. Um, but in the past, when I've done some of the other movies, like some of Judd's movies, we've gone to Paris and Australia, all these places. It sounds very exotic, and it is pretty exotic to go to all these places, but you're in each place for about a day and in a hotel room, so you don't really even get to see anything. It's a bit of a bummer. H had you ever, I mean, you know, we talk about these Marvel films, and they, they, they have a, an amazing record that continues with this one. As a fan and as an actor, do you say along the lines in the last few years, get me a meeting? Or is it just sort of like, oh, that ship has sailed. I'm not going to be a superhero. They don't think of me that way. Give me a sense of sort of like your perspective on the superhero phenomenon that was developing and how you saw, if you saw a place for yourself in it. Well, I, you know, we, I think most actors feel like, oh, well, this has been cool. I've done something here. Uh, like I did a comedy and now I want to try something else, something different. Over the last few years, I've done primarily comedies and I've always wanted to try and do different movies, different genres. The, I guess the Marvel Universe was one I n didn't see coming and nothing that I thought, oh, I really want to try and get uh, in that world. Um, but when it the you know opportunity presented itself i was elated i was really excited by it and uh and so it was a bit of a no brainer for me and and uh and kind of a shock actually so when you get a gig like this who are the first phone calls who 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 do you need to tell guys i'm going to be a marvel superhero uh well my family i tell my i told my wife i called my mom uh some friends a couple of friends um and then and then I couldn't, what was weird is like I, I couldn't, I didn't say anything for a while because, you know, they're pretty secretive about this stuff. And I have kids, so I couldn't tell them. You don't trust your own children is what not, you're saying. Not, yeah. uh, not as far as I can throw them. <laughs> uh, but, but, uh, so did you ever explain why is daddy dressing up like a giant ant man on set? Did you say like... <laughs> they knew by that point. <laughs> Jig was up. No, I, uh, you know, when I, the, I told, uh, I told my kids not that long afterward, but, um, but uh, yeah, there was only, it was really only a few people um, that I kind of shared the news with. At, at so first. is preparation night and day versus, I mean, every film offers its own different kind of prep, but something like this where physicality is obviously important. Right. Is that the, the biggest difference in terms of prepping for this kind of a film versus others? I think others? so. I think so. Um, you know, I mean, the pre-production and everything for this film obviously had a, you know, a bit of a tumultuous road. Um, but as as far as the actual, like when I first got the job and then I started to train and, and prepare, it, the physical aspect was paramount. And so for about a year before we ever started shooting, I started uh, working with like a 
a gymnastics coach so I could learn how to do shoulder rolls and, and flips and things like that. Uh, uh, light parkour. Uh, <laughs> emphasis on light. <laughs> are you moving on to medium parkour now or are you just sticking with light? Uh, <laughs> to, to, like, What's to the sit, difference between the, light the and medium? The difference? Yeah. The difference between light parkour and, uh, and <laughs> medium parkour, it's a pretty big jump. <laughs> One you're not ready to make. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night, everyone. You guys are ahead of me. Good job. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it, it, you know, it, parkour is the kind of thing, it's almost like violin. I got to believe that, like, it takes a while. You can't just pick it up. So, uh, you know, I, would start, I started doing that, and then I started kind of also working with a trainer with, like, weight training and stuff like that and then a nutritionist all like that whole thing uh and that became pretty much what my day was everything worked around that so, so that are, was are, are you focus. throughout that process just like lifting up your shirt counting the abs until it's ready like not quite <laughs> almost there i see something coming in i think no but it is that thing like you where you just do it for so long and, then, and you're like really this is this is it this is um <laughs> it's it's could be frustrating, but like I, you know, like anything else, you start to get into it, and and then I really kind of enjoyed um, I en enjoyed having so much energy, like waking up in the morning at about six in the morning and like ready to start the day. That would seem that was the most un like never so foreign to me. Are like, you gonna woo <laughs> fresh? I'm fresh as a daisy. <laughs> and now you're drinking giant tubs of tequila. And now before. I'm at the Westin in <laughs> Times Square. <laughs> having, yeah. This is how you celebrate your giant big superhero movie yeah. in the saddest hit, way hit, possible. Hit, hit all the hotel bars <laughs> in Midtown. If you're ever looking for Paul. What tequila do you want? Ah, just give me anything <laughs> middle of the road. <laughs> Not medium. Just the, the light. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever is closest. You uh, also have the distinction, I believe, of being the first Marvel superhero that also get a, a writing credit on the film, which is kind of amazing. You and Adam McKay. Adam McKay. Yeah. Uh, obviously, began with Edgar, and he still has a story credit, I believe, yes. in there. Um, talk to me a little bit and, about and Joe Cornish as well. Joe Cornish's collaborator, amazing. Um, talk to me a little bit about the writing process and. How, I mean, that must have been very rewarding that you get such a, a hand in this, not just a, you're not just a hired gun. It, it was, although it was also daunting and, and um, you know, unexpected. It happened because Edgar left the project and Marvel wanted, uh, you know, we were, we were months away from shooting and there was a script that seemed to, you know, it had gone through a couple of versions and it was, uh, they had some ideas and then I had some ideas, Adam McKay came in and he had some ideas. Uh, and then we just kind of, Adam is somebody I worked with on Anchorman, and he's a brilliant, he's the smartest guy in the room. Uh, and so we just started talking about some things we could do with the script as it existed. Uh, and then, you know, we wanted to kind of go back to what Edgar and Joe had written uh, as well and incorporate some new ideas and expand some things. And it just, it was really out of necessity. It wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't anything more than that. And um, we got, you know, we got it to the place, I think a place that it needed to be before we started shooting. And then, you know, and, I, and when Adam and I came on to start writing, Peyton Reed came on, I want to say like a week later and uh, and then we all worked on it together. Movies tend to be, and this is this is true. They are group efforts. It wasn't just us. There were other writers. Marvel had a couple of guys, you know, uh, Andrew, Ferrari, and and, uh, and Gabe, whose name I would be able to remember had I not had a tumbler of tequila. <laughs> You're in Ant Man. Andrew just and so Gabe. You know. Okay, good. Yeah. Go. Uh, no, they uh, they were we had we had guys on set uh, incorporate like alt takes, different notes, all sorts of things. So, you know, they they are very collaborative um, endeavors. I mean, and in talking to you guys and talking to like some of the scenes, Michael Pena almost steals this movie. He's so funny in this. And there's a, 
I get a sense that there's more, frankly, improv and alternate takes than probably normally happens on a more Marvel movie like this. And part of that maybe is Peyton comes from a comedic background. And as you're saying, you've got this script that's fluid, but you've got a lot of collaborators. I mean, was it a little bit more? There wasn't a ton of improv. Not really. There, with Peña, a little bit. I mean, it depends. I like working that way, but not everybody likes to work that way. And Peña is like somebody that we're just kind of writing and knowing, okay, I know that he's going to bring some things to this. And, and that when we're shooting it, say like, hey, let's play around with it. And he loves to work that way. The guy's so quick uh, and funny. And, uh, and so there, you know, some of the stuff with, some of the scenes with Pena were uh, a bit more improvisation than, than some of the other ones. I think one of the cool things people will discover when they see this film is that um, it's a smaller film in some ways, in that it's a, it, the stakes of it are about this guy and his family. Yet, it, I mean, it still has like huge action and the huge effects that you would expect in a Marvel movie. And it's kind of going in a, in a different direction, especially coming off of you know Avengers that got as ginormous as you can imagine a superhero film being. I mean, was that challenging, and was that sort of like the reason to do this in some ways that you have a movie spoiler alert that kind of ends in a in a kid's bedroom as like the final. Well, it was one of the things that I thought was really cool about it. Um, you know, it seems as if with each, each movie, the stakes are bigger, the landscapes are enormous. The last one was in space. <laughs> you know, the, the idea that w some of these landscapes would look like alien landscapes, but were really, like you say, on the train set in a kid's bedroom. Um, you know, this idea that visually was going to be bananas and totally striking, yet on surfaces that we're all very familiar with. Uh, I thought that would be really cool, and it is. This is also new territory for you, correct me if I'm wrong, just on the effects side of things, of like these yeah. scenes when you are shrunk down. Uh, I mean, I, don't I can't even imagine what that looks like for you. Was, that, was there a learning curve on that? Was it kind of easy to kind of not feel like an idiot when you're surrounded by nothing but... Well, you feel like an idiot, first of all, just walking out of like the trailer where in that Andy Circus ping pong ball suit. <laughs> That I'd never had that on before, uh, and then and, and then it's you know it's it was in a we did most of the stuff we kind of went through all of the movie in a sound we're on a sound stage and it was this area surrounded by I don't know like a hundred cameras and uh, and then you know the area was taped off and I kind of went through the movie and and it's like all right I'm rolling out of the way uh, this is where my light parkour really came into play. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna step on me. Oh, I gotta roll, you know, like jump out of the way and that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, it, that was a new experience and you feel a little self-conscious, but not too much because every time I'm thinking, all right, well, the, the people that are going to make this look real are the best in the business. Um, and I also thought it's going to be cool the way they do it because it hasn't been done before. You know, a lot of the surfaces, uh, when I shrink down, you would think those are CGI, but they're not. Um, when you look back at like the Incredible Shrinking Man or some of the shrinking things, you know, it's everything else is practical. A chair is built and it's this big or, you know, a microphone would be huge. And that, but we didn't have anything like that, but we had a macro photography unit so that whenever we were shooting the movie, there was a whole other unit going on that I never really saw that was shooting uh, the locations and shooting things close up. And they just put me in those locations. So when you are in a bathtub, it's the bathtub. And when you, you know, are in carpet, that's carpet. And uh, it's not computer generated. Did you do some binge watching of classics in the genre? Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Inner Space. <laughs> uh, I didn't go too heavy into the, uh, in, in, you know, I'd seen, I mean, Inner Space and Honey, I Shrunk the I've seen all of those. Um, but I, I didn't really revisit it. It's a, it's a heist movie, and I didn't really, I mean, I, I'd seen some heist movies. I did a thing, I was, I was guest editor on IMDB today, and uh, I was going to do a top 10 list of uh, my top 10 heist movies. And uh, I mean, I, there's so many of them that I love, but in kind of researching and go, going over, I realized, oh, there are so many m more that I haven't seen. Um, what was your, what's the top? Well, it's, uh, 
Rafifi was my number one. So classy that way. Yeah. Well, it just sounds like a masterpiece, and it deserves <laughs> the number one slot. You've never seen so it. So I did you, the yeah. top ten heist movies I've never seen. <laughs> and there's some really great ones on there, so make sure and check it out. But it's that thing of like, oh, okay, yeah, you would think I'd go back and kind of watch every shrinking movie. I'd watch every single heist movie. Uh, and I didn't. But that's because I'm not that great of an actor. <laughs> Well, let's see some of that not-so-great acting in this first clip from Ant-Man. Uh, no, it's an excellent scene between you and the lovely Evangeline Lilly, I believe. Let's check it out. Does it feel good to know that people like to see you punched in the face? You've got a really big reaction. <laughs> That's a pretty good fake punch, I gotta say. She, uh, she didn't really hit me, but it looks like she did. Movie magic, right? Wait, people are people are awing like they want to see you actually punched in the face. What, what, guys? All right, who out there wants to punch me in the face? <laughs> Line them up. Wait, too many hands going up. Were um, were were superheroes big to you as a kid? Did you dress up as a superhero at any point? Uh, I mean, I ha I you know I put the towel around my neck as a cape. I think when when I was in my twenties, but. Uh, <laughs> Is the college days? I didn't, yeah, it's just yeah, <laughs> the frat thing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I, you know, I had like some, I don't know. There was a while I was pretty into the Hulk, but I think I was in the Lou Ferrigno, Bill Bixby series. I got way into that, uh, but it was short lived, really. Um, I wasn't a huge comic book reader as a kid. I liked them okay. I like superheroes okay, and then I used to get um, these British comics sent to me from my. Uh, relatives that I liked. They were kind of like funny comics. I used to read, I get the Archie Digest, <laughs> Laugh Digest. People have said like, you know, do you know Ant-Man? I wasn't familiar with Ant-Man, but I could tell you anything about Mr. Weatherby and <laughs> Pop's Chocolate Shop. Midge. I, know, I knew some of the deeper characters from the Archie world. Who would you like to play in an Archie uh, live action? We've never seen an Archie Ooh, live action film. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> A lot of reaction. Yeah, Reggie Archie. I don't hear a Jughead, <laughs> and I don't hear um, a Midge. Uh, I suppose. Yeah. I think I'd probably go Pop. Pop's Chocolate Shop. Run the shop. Oh, who am I kidding? Reggie. He's the coolest. <laughs> so, did you know? You must know. You have friends that have done this kind of a thing. It's a. It's a not. I mean, it's a small club, but it's. It's expanding by every year. Right. Did you talk to anybody that had been through this before and get any kind of tips about negotiating, whatever it was, whether it's costume, the press, everything that goes along with a job like this? I didn't really talk to anybody about any of that stuff, although um, when I got cast, uh, I did talk to Chris Pratt a little bit. I saw him at a, at a, at like a, at a Oscar party. That's the way I roll. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, and uh, but I was talking to him at this. To be fair, uh, did I mention it was an Oscar party? <laughs> to be fair, so you're, many you're people there. It's like, who do I talk to? Chris Pratt, or shall I go over there and insert myself in some conversation <laughs> that nobody wants me around? Your head was inside a margarita at the time. Let's be fair, it wasn't that classy. Yeah, I, was, I was swimming in a pool of Jameson. <laughs> um, what no, did Pratt say? Yeah. No, I, uh, I I I talked to Chris Pratt a little bit, and I said, what was it like? for you and, uh, and you know, how has this whole experience been kind of in this Marvel world? And, uh, and you know, he was, he was great. He told me, he said, have you ever been to Comic-Con? And I had never been to Comic-Con. And he said, that's a lot of fun and you'll be amazed at how many people are there and how uh, nice they're, they'll make you feel so welcome. It's kind of like the greatest thing. Um, and he said Marvel's really, like he loved working with them. He said they uh, have lots of ideas and they're kind of, they just, they're, they take chances and they're creative and, and he had just the greatest stuff to say. And that's, and that's, you know, I did find that to be the case. This also might be the first Halloween where people are dressed up as one of your characters. I don't know, have any of your characters ever been, have you ever seen somebody dressed uh, up well, as? Well, last a... Halloween, uh, the streets were filled with everyone dressed as uh, my character from Over Her Dead Body. And then some people dressed as uh, uh, Ava Longoria from that one too. <laughs> no, I, I don't think I've ever been <laughs> ever been in a Halloween costume. Uh, no, no. 
It's a new thing. Yeah. Well, but no, no, some people have dressed as Brian Fantana. I have seen Anchorman costumes, but uh, that might be it. Uh, speaking of the costume, I think this next clip has you in all your Ant-Man glory. So let's take a look at all this right. one, shall we? Just, just to note a theme recurring, people are continuing to clap and laugh when you are injuring, being injured. And it's nothing funnier than somebody hitting their head, you know? <laughs> it works every time. It's like a spit take. Um, the costume's pretty cool. It's, uh, the costume is awesome. It really, if I may interrupt your question. <laughs> no, it's a, it was just an <laughs> observation. Go on. Let me tell you about my costume, Josh. Uh, no, I, I, the first time I saw it, I was, uh, I thought, man, <laughs> it's just so so cool looking, and it's, especially the helmet. Like when I saw that helmet for the first time, it kind of reminded me of how I felt about the stormtrooper helmets when I was a kid. And I used to draw this. I just thought the stormtrooper helmets were were really really cool, and uh, and the, and same thing with the surgeon droid for some reason from Empire Strikes Back. I was thought like had kind of a similar. Then uh, I would think back to my action figures. Um, but I had that same thing where like, God, that's such a cool, like the, the design of the helmet is really, is great. And then, you know, I went through a few, m more than a few fittings. They're very particular about all of the details. And so the first time I tried it on, it was uh, just a trip and standing kind of like as they're making all their marks and stuff like that, it's, I would stand differently. I would just think, man, this is it. This is the, uh, this is the suit. And you've gotten, uh, since shooting Ant-Man, you've already shot, I don't know if you're done, on um, the new Captain America movie. That's right, yeah, yeah. Um, have they made alterations to your liking? Did you, after the first one, be like, I need a little room here, a little help here? <laughs> What's the uh, second was, iteration versus yeah, the first? Yeah, there was no, I mean, this, the, the suit, it, it is a little bit, there are some differences. Um, I, there wasn't anything where I thought, oh, I need more room here or less, you know, any, none of that, but, you know, just story-wise, it seems to make sense that maybe uh, I've worked on it a little bit. Okay. We're and, about, and we're so about the to. The design of it is a little different. Uh, we're going to turn it over to you guys for questions in just a moment. Before that, I selfishly want to ask one non-Ant-Man related question: uh, Wet Hot American Summer is upon us. A couple weeks away. What can you tell us about what we can expect from from this one? Well. Um, it's, it's really funny. I haven't seen them all, but uh, I've read them all. And, you know, the movie, I mean, I think some of you might know this, the movie took place on the last day of camp, uh, and we were all 15 years older than we were supposed to be when we shot that. Well, now we're 15 years older from when we shot the movie, and the show is the first day of camp, so it's technically a prequel so we're, we're all about 25 to 30 years <laughs> too old for the parts that we're playing. Uh, but um, I was, you know, it kind of came about pretty quickly. It had been talked about for a while. I never really knew in what incarnation, whether there would be a movie or if it was really going to happen. Um, but it, it came together pretty quickly, and everyone was, uh, that was involved in the movie said, yes, for sure. And... Um, it's like, you know, at first kind of, oh, is this, do we want to revisit this? People really love this movie. You don't want to, and I just started reading the very first script and was on the floor and it completely captures, I think, the humor and what works about the movie. And it, it is, it's insane. I would hope. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> it's, what I it's want. so insane and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see if you guys have some questions. I'm going to preemptively be bad cop. Uh, if you guys can not ask for autograph or human contact, Mr. Rudd, I will be a human shield. And please, whatever you could do, try to avoid eye contact. With me. <laughs> you can look at him. Just don't It'll assault him. It'll be a him. little bit like an eclipse. If you have a paper <laughs> card, shield your eyes. It's like the sun. Uh, first question. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the commercial you did for Super Nintendo back in the 90s. How was that experience for you, Dad? <laughs> and since you were the Super Nintendo kid, had you been, uh, you visited the Nintendo store because of the recent loss of the Nintendo president and pay a tribute for that since you were doing uh, Jimmy Fallon the other day, I heard. Ah. This is the first time anyone's asked me about that commercial. <laughs> One of my very first jobs. Uh, I remember shooting it. And uh, I was very excited because it was a national. 
and I remember I wore a very long coat and it went down to my ankles. And uh, despite the fact that I am kicking ass on the Nintendo system in the commercial, it did not reflect my actual Nintendo skills at the time. Um, and uh, <laughs> and I, I, this is what I, I, I do remember that the year it came out, uh, maybe later in the year, after it kind of gone off the air already, there, it was the NCAA uh, basketball, like the Final Four or something, and it might have been the championship game. And they had the beginning of the game, uh, they, they used that commercial where I went and jammed the thing into the console and I'm playing it. And then on the screen at the drive-in, which is part of the commercial, they uh, were just showing basketball highlights and making it look like I was controlling college basketball players. And I swear it was like I won the Oscar. I couldn't, I was such, I couldn't believe I'd like made it. And all of my friends were calling me saying, dude, I j you're in the finals. Uh, and uh, and that, that's what I remember most from that commercial. Hello. Um, first of all, I just want to say you are one of my favorite actors. And I'm not just saying that because you're here. I literally say that to anyone I talk to. Oh, so thank you very much. I love everything you do. Um, but I have not lived here long enough to see you um, on the stage. Hmm. And so I was wondering if you have any desires or any wants to go back to that. And if so, before you even ask, yes, I am available to audition. So just very let good. me know I am available. All right. <laughs> and your uh, actor is Equity? Uh, I can be. I'm an engineer, so... Oh, perfect. I can, yeah. Yeah, if it's right in. If it's right in. All right, we'll talk. Okay. Uh, I have no plan as of yet to do a play, although... Musical? Uh, or a musical. I think that would be a blast. I, um... You know, I, I have always tried... I've lived, in, I've lived in New York for 20 years, and the reason that I live in the city, besides the fact that it's the greatest city in the world... <laughs> is that the theater community is actually a vibrant and viable thing here. And, and I always have hoped to have a career where I can do movies and continue to go back and do plays. And, and that certainly is the case uh, still. So while I have nothing planned, hopefully, like within the next couple of years, I'll be able to do another play. Cool. Looking forward to it. Thank you. What are, what are they gonna? What, what is it like? You know, being with uh, most of the Avengers, like Iron Man or Captain America, Black Widow, versus being in in your own movie, at, in your own standalone with your usual guys. And uh, as for Ant Man, uh, what what is it like working with Ev Evangeline Lilly? Because I I seen her I, I seen her in The Hobbit before. And I thought she did great. I just want to know what she's like from your point of view. Well, uh, and about Captain America: Civil War. Right. I'll, the Evangeline, I'll answer Evangeline one first. The latter question uh, first. Uh, working with Evangeline was great. I uh, never met her. I didn't know her before this movie, but I knew who she was because I watched Lost, and uh, and it took and, and I'd seen The Hobbit as well. Yeah, and uh, and so you know, it's like you're talking and getting to know each other, and you're kind of focused on the script, and then I just you know I'm like. What's Sawyer like? Those are the kind of questions I, I want to have. And she would answer them. So it was, uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, as far as working on um, Captain America 3, it was pretty, pretty mind-blowing, actually. Um, people asked me, since I got this job, they'd say, how does it feel to be part of the Marvel Universe? And uh, it was really cool. And it is really cool. And when we were shooting Ant-Man and I'm walking around in that suit, it feels really exciting. And... Uh, and and real, but it's we're in a bubble. Uh, then when I went to go to that set, it became real in a way that I didn't even feel shooting Ant Man because there they were. And uh, I, I, I'm, what's Robert Downey Jr. was there? Yes, and and Chris Evans. I I have you know I have scenes where I was talking to them. I couldn't believe it. I'm. <laughs> I'm like, uh, oh, I don't know, Tony Stark, huh? And I'm like, oh my God. Uh, and and I, I completely turned into a, a 10 year old. You know, we're, there's a, I'm, where I get kind of dressed in the suit, there's, um, you know, they have like kind of their changing area. And, uh, and so it's like on a stand, I'm like, whoa, there's, uh, there's the winter soldier arm. <laughs> so I kind of like went over and I was just like, Dang, man, and then, and then uh, 
And then, um, you know, Chris Evans was shooting it as S.H.I.E.L.D. And he had to go do something, so he just gave the S.H.I.E.L.D. to the Russell, the prop guy. And I just went over and said, can I, can I see it? Can I see it? <laughs> I put my hand in there, I'm like, wow. You know, it, 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 became, it became very real in this way that, wow, there they are. And, and so I have said, you know, I said this the other day, so I asked, like, so do you feel like you're part of it now? And the only way I could even describe it was I felt like Cousin Oliver to the rest of the Brady Bunch. <laughs> I was like, eh. I mean, I do. I guess technically I'm in the family, but, uh, you know. I guess you could say it's like Sam to the rest of the Drummond family. <laughs> Cousin Oliver gave a dose of life to that, that show. I mean, it they kind of injected. I don't know if, yes, that's the difference. I don't need, they don't need me to inject <laughs> the, uh, with life. But uh, it, is a, it is like the new kid in school. I know you mentioned that you do parkour and you saw a nutritionist, but I wanted to know specifically what your meal plan was like, only because we recently joined a gym and we're trying to get abs. And then Josh, <laughs> I know you said, I, I follow you on Instagram, and I know you said no human contact, but I wanted to know, huh. since I love happy, sad, confused, I'm not to on Josh. Instagram, no, no, so I don't know who no, no, you're I'm following. Talking to Josh. <laughs> this is, it's a two-part question for Josh. So yours is the meal plan. Josh, you, you do happy, sad, confused on Instagram, and I follow you, and I wanted to know oh. if I could do that with you, and if Paul would be in it, then that would be great, too. Oh. Why don't you take yours, and I'll formulate an okay. answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, what I was eating was just, you know, I was eating at very specific times, too. That was a thing. I was eating, you know, I'd wake up, and I'd have some eggs um, and uh, black coffee. And then around 10.30, I would make a, like, a protein shake. I ate a lot of proteins. I ate, like, a lot of uh, lean meat and fish and, and that kind of thing, uh, and vegetables, um, but not all vegetables. I didn't really have any fruit. Um, uh, and then I would make another protein shake. I would occasionally have some raw almonds. <laughs> and, and then and, uh, I would eat at 6 o'clock at night, and I would generally have like a salad, vegetables, actually very little protein. And then if I really wanted to give myself a treat, I would have seltzer. <laughs> and that's how I rewarded myself after a day of good behavior by having, instead of water, carbonated water. Uh, I will, of course, do happy second confused with you afterwards. I, I can, we can't make an exception for Mr. Rudd. He's, he's an in-demand man, but stick around after. I'll be here. Yeah, I won't, I won't do that. <laughs> no, I, I would, but not really. But he just did it back there. We I can just composite did it. Oh, yeah. you in. You'll see it we on Instagram composite. soon. Yeah. What was going on in Scott Lang's mind when he's transitioning from Ant-Man into Captain America's Civil War? And who would you like to face off in Civil War? And why, of course? Ah. Uh, well, uh, I, this, is a very, this is the kind of thing. I start to answer this question, and all of a sudden, sirens go off, and poisonous darts get shot into my neck. Uh, you know what, it, there, I, I can't give any of the details about any of that stuff uh, uh, away, but um, you know, I, I reckon what was going through Scott's mind was not st uh, so unlike what was actually going through my own mind. Yeah, which was, wow, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't think, you know, do you want to go up against any of those guys? They all seem pretty tough. Yeah, I can hold my own. <laughs> Two questions. First of all, I'm curious, what was A, Judd Apatow, and B, Will Ferrell's reaction to you being cast as Ant-Man? And second of all, uh, what goes through your mind whenever you're in public and the song Guillermo Be There by Michael McDonald plays <laughs> in the background? <laughs> do, do you mean do I want to yamo burn the, any place to the ground, right? Uh, I think with, uh, with um, those guys, they were excited for me when I got this part. Uh, I haven't ha really talked to either of them, you know, so in depth. I, if I, all this stuff about getting in shape, I know Judd, when I've talked to him in the past, he's always just been like, ugh. He, he, he uh, always wants me to go the opposite way. He always makes me eat a lot of food to work on his movies 
because he wants me to look like him. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm always eating in the movies. Um, <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, in, in regard to here, yeah, like the, and the Michael McDonald, like that guy's an amazing singer, first Michael McDonald. And uh, I just remember Yamo Be There, I just never really knew what it meant. I remember as a kid growing up, but I was here, Yamo Be There. I was like, what is that? Um, but I, he seems very cool. I always liked him just because he, also because he did the last song to the um, South Park movie and like crushed it. You listen to that, you go like, oh, he's hilarious. So I always felt kind of guilty. I always feel guilty about it. I, I don't want to ever reference anybody in uh, any of those movies, but I, I do sometimes anyway, and then I just, then I just feel terrible about them. And then I just hate myself, but it's like, eh, it's a good joke. You got to kind of, won't just be hated <laughs> by Michael McDonald. <laughs> so now that you've been a superhero, what, what kind of role are you itching to do next? That you've, you've gone all the way up to be having superpowers. So now what are you itching to do? Like what's next? Uh, well, I would like to do something. I mean, even before this, I would like to do something that people would really not think of me for. Something that is maybe a darker kind of role, uh, or a bit more dramatic. I, you know, I, I'm interested in lots of different things and I like lots of different things. Um, and I haven't gone about my career necessarily uh, with the kind of very focused effort of mixing it up intentionally because I was just in a comedy so now I wanna do something darker. I, I really kind of look at each thing as it comes and think, oh, are these people that I really like working with or do I really like this role or this script and is it going to be a fun experience and I want to enjoy the ride so uh, that that plays a big part and and I have I certainly have but I'd like to I'd like to try and do some things that you know people a lot of people went huh when I got cast for this part I would like to do more parts where people would go huh when I get cast in them um, if you needed to fight any of the Avengers who do you think you would beat oh I have two questions <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you could beat if you had to fight one of the Avengers? Well, I mean, I'm fairly confident in my own abilities. Um, I always think like you can't you can't fight what you can't see. Okay. <laughs> and I'm tough to see. Okay, okay, I see what so, you're saying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I mean. I think any of them would put up a pretty good fight, but I feel good, I feel good about my chances okay. with any of them. <laughs> my second question is a little weird, and you can say no, but um, my no. high school... <laughs> you didn't even wait for me to finish. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> That's the tequila talking. <laughs> Um, my high school, we do this thing where we try to get shout outs from people that we admire. And I was wondering if I could get one from you. No physical contact No, no, required. absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah? Okay, all you would have to say is, um, the Lourdes class of 2016 runs this. The Lourdes class, class of 2016 runs, runs this. this. Okay. Yep, you ready? Hold on. <laughs> ready, set, go. Hey guys, you know what I think? What? I think the Lord's class of 2016 runs this. All right guys, let's give it up for Mr. Paul Rudd, Ant-Man Opens Thank tomorrow. You so much. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs>